uh, the empire of money, which is what all these people are, you know, they depend upon suppression of scientific development and knowledge by keeping us backwards and dumb, and we don't want that. Okay? If you listen to the elite, there's no such thing as a scientific principle. And the problem here is the conception of what the truth is. In the Bilderberg, you know, or the globalist-led system, it doesn't exist. The truth doesn't exist. Because if it is an imperialist system, no truth, only the arrogance of power. However, when you're living for the future of humanity, okay, you, re you realize that we need technological progress, scientific progress, cultural progress, not merely to become richer or more powerful, but because, as I said before, we need to be mortal, as no animal can be. We need to uh, participate in the discovery and application of universal physical principles that no animal can do. And when we find our motivation and our morality in all of these scientific principles, we become morally invincible. And this is what, you know, greater good of humanity is all about. And do you see a, uh, a resistance in, in, in that to where this is taking us down now? Is there a, a, a prospect therein, a, a hope, if you will, in, in trying to thwart this or turn it in a different direction? Well, absolutely. I mean, they debased education and destroyed everything out there, that, you know, morality. You have the entire generation of people, well, the only thing they know is what they've seen on a television set. You know, a generation of people uh, uh, who get all their knowledge, you know, from, uh, uh, from a Twitter or Facebook account, who have never read a book in their lives, who have never written anything, you know, a poem, you know, or an original thought. It's everything that we do is, you know, our smartphone and our entire lives are in this telephone. So you can't expect anything from this generation of people. But needless to say, as I said before, this is being done on purpose. If they wanted the education to go in a different direction, the government certainly has the capacity to do that. And what they've done, what they've done, okay, is they've created this outcome-based education, which is basically a vicious suppression of creative powers of reason. These uh, distinctly human mental capabilities expressed typically in the form of valid, axiomatic, revolutionary discoveries in physical science. Now, the proper purpose of education is not to prepare the young for some uh, predetermined social status in adult life, which is what they do in Switzerland. You get to be 14, you can actually pick a job, and you become a welder uh, uh, or, or, you know, or a carpenter. And then you work, you destroy families, you feel you're an adult, you have the money, you can actually buy alcohol and drugs, and, you know, suddenly you do, again, go into the cycle of what the society, you know, the grading of society is all about. Now, the only moral purpose of education is to develop an entire population up to a level of scientific and moral knowledge necessary, not only to perpetuate society at no less than its present level of power in the universe, but uh, uh, to carry the process of development of the whole population one step upward. And this is the moral level and the purpose of cognitive potential of each and every person in the universe, or you can call a citizen of the universe of the planet Earth. Uh, what, do you, what can you say about how things are being degraded right now as well as a kind of a, not only demoralization, but everything else that, that occurs that is turning mankind against Anything that basically is, is, is natural or the natural understanding of things that we have, it's, it's just a tremendous onslaught of, of creating this kind of artificial bubble around young people in this, at this time as well. And I, I feel that it has an interface with the, with the transhumanist movement to kind of just, I guess, I guess separate mankind from, from, the, from a natural understanding of what we can observe on, on, on the planet, what we know about the physical reality and everything else, to kind of create them separately and, and, and to, in, in that way, control them better and in that way kind of try to keep them in this artificial uh, biosphere, so if you know what I'm getting at. I mean, this has to do with, as you say, education, of course, but also just social engineering and on, on top of it, propaganda and everything else. So it's just, it's, it's a tremendous uh, obstacle that we have to try to, you know, free people and, and make them understand and see what actually are, are, are part of as opposed to this uh, new artificial empire that they're building. You know, the power of the kings comes from the willingness of the masses in allowing them to be our kings. Now, empire is what we're talking about. It's not some king sitting on a gold-plated throne. Empires are above kings. 
It's a system of control. It's control of uh, of everything by the moneyed system, by the international, you know, financial system controlled by international banks. Now, if uh, uh, if people are to participate in self-government, they must participate in the ideas by which society is self-governed. This would mean the end of oligarchism. Nations who foster the the uh, creative mental development of their population produce a people who will not tolerate under any circumstances oligarchic forms of ruling definitely. Illiterate, technologically backward, great unwashed populations will. In fact, there is a uh, uh, little doubt that illiteracy and technological backwardness are contributing causes for the emergence of oligarchical rule. So again, right. it's a moral problem, a problem of our destiny and how we the people understand the role that we play in this enormous, magnificent, fabulous and beautiful universe that surrounds us. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you, definitely. How do you think that we can connect with this again? I mean, it has to be a natural spark in people that's, that's just there and, and, and willingness to participate in this and understand what we have around us to, to try to improve things as opposed to just, you know, degrade them or, or, or break everything down as a piece, as, as seems to be the kind of the, the ideas of, of these times. But how can we, how can we connect with that, that again? If, if that's something that people are lo lost, you know, have lost. That's a good question. Uh, give me a second to think about it. Or in the bigger context, basically, how if if there is a propaganda scheme to to you know to implement this to keep people away from what we've been talking about, and 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 how do we how do we fight that system? How do we you know through the education, through the media, through the propaganda, and all that stuff? How do we how can we reach through to people? You know. You know, truth always lies in the higher order of processes. True sovereignty, for example, lies not in popular opinions, but in the creative power of the individual human mind. The cultural diversity is, is not only our, you know, hallmark of progress, but an insurance policy against extinction as a species. And once born, a nation state, which is what these people are trying to destroy, the idea of countries. This concept never dies. It only waits for courageous and sane human beings to come to its defense, to perfect the concept. So, you know, the way I see it as we should be a fraternity of nations, you know, fatherlands working together, not as one globalized state, but as countries working together, of sovereign nations united by a common purpose for humanity, until we can bring mankind into this uh, age of reason. I think history will be shaped in actuality, not by the wills of... of uh, masses of humanity, but by the mere handfuls who, for the purposes of good or evil, steer the fate of mankind, generally as herds of cows are steered to and from the pasture, and also occasionally, as you well know, to the slaughterhouse. Yeah, I know. What, what, do, you, uh, what do you think about violence and, uh, and wars um, in terms of what we can, what we can see ahead? Is, is that an... Do man, does mankind have to defend itself at some point and, and try to, you know, stand up against this? And, um, um, of course, we, we have that already around the world. <laughs> that's, that's the common, uh, you know, uh, the, the common denominator that we can see right now with expansion of, of the empire and everything else. So it's not that that's separate from it or that we don't have that. But nonetheless, more taken to the, to the Western world, we can see, for example, the, uh, the militaries around the, the world are, are preparing for urban warfare. It's all going to be in that kind of environment. It seems like kind of a perpetual civil war against the people who will rebel against this type of empire building that we're seeing, right? Well, that's why, you know, they're, they're, they're foreseeing this. That's why they're talking in the Strategic Strengths Report about the, uh, you know, growing gap between majority and a small number of highly visible super rich, which is likely to pose an increasing threat to social order and stability. They're getting ready for this collapse. They're getting ready for this war between them and us. And this is one of the reasons, again, as I said before, the technologies being developed, you know, today, okay, are not there being developed to stop the terrorists, not to help humanity. They're there to make sure that the 99% are stopped dead in their tracks. You said Elysium before. That's a great example. You create a, uh, a synthetic system in space between the moon and the earth, and you live there if you have the money to do that. 
and as the wealthy have gazillions of dollars, and we already have the International Space Station, well, it's only a matter of time before we create one of these and send all the wealthy up there, and the rest of us will just continue living here, you know, downtrodden in a society destroyed by hunger and disease. And if people don't understand it, they better wake up because it's all around us. You know, in, in Elysium, they show this basically incredible just machine that you can, you know, jump into and you push a button and you can uh, cure a cancer and all the rest of it. You know, this kind of, and that's kind of the, the golden nugget in the movie as, as a way to like, that's what they're seeking and that's what they want to get, you know, everyone want to get their hands on and everything else. It, it, to me, Daniel, as I'm as I'm looking the the advancement of of these kinds of um, uh, properties, if you will, within technology and medicine and everything else, there always seems to be a something yet again that we have to fight against in terms of you know the the within the medical or what happens with our body. As you said before, it's like this perpetual taking of of drugs to be able to just maintain the uh, the, the implants in our bodies or something like that. And it seems that we're always going to as we try to solve one problem with with the technology and with the medical, you know, chemical, what have you, another one is going to arise, and it's a constant. Again, it's a constant battle, and we we seem to, to me, it seems like we're walking the wrong path towards creating a a healthy human being. If you know what I mean. Well, it depends who is walking the wrong path, because if you're talking about the elite, I'm absolutely convinced they don't take the drugs that we take, which is why you have all the Rockefellers and the Queens living to be a hundred years old. Right. Yeah. There's a reason for that. You know, and it's the rest of us who are being drugged to death, which is the whole point of the Rockefeller-controlled, you know, medical cartel. And they control it the same way as they control the food cartel and as they control the oil way back when. That hasn't changed at all. It's the whole drugging of America, the whole drugging of the world, you know, to destroy us, which is one of the reasons you have, I think it was something like 250,000 people die on a, a yearly basis you know, from taking wrong pills just in the United States alone. Yeah. Well, why do people not see that, do you think? I mean, when people are begging for, you know, universal health care and everything else, they are begging for the Rockefeller medical establishment type of medicine. You know, <laughs> I can't understand why people don't see that. Because it's, 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 you know, it's not on the front page of a newspaper. You know, it's, that's how the media controls us. You know, somebody said to me not too long ago, they said, you know, if what you say is true in my books, you know, then why isn't it on the cover of the New York Times? No. Yeah, you know, well, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, okay, well, you know, <laughs> it's not on the cover of New York Times or the Washington Post or Time Magazine or CBS, NBC, whatever, you know, other stations are out there. It's because the media forms part of the global cartel, which is why they attend these private meetings like Bilderberg, Trilateral Commission, Council for Relations. They're part of this interlocked cartel, juggernaut, and the reason that you have the biggest banks in America owning significant portions of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the, and, and the Washington Posts is that if you uh, control the media, you control the outflow of information, which is why New York Times, the Washington Post, or no one else out there ever talks about the city banks, the Bakovias, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hong Shang corporations, you know, being in the drug business. What do you think we'll see in the next, uh, I don't know, five to, to ten years down the road? And, and, and do you think there will be any obstacles in their, in their path towards what they try to achieve? We have the 2045, for example, coming out of, what is it, the initiative there from the, the Russian, I forget his name now, the Avatar Project and everything else. Oh, Dmitry that, Iskov. That's right. How, I mean, how, is that just overambitious or, or do you think they, will, they actually will get there? I think they're already way beyond what we actually imagine. Technology will increasingly dominate the world. It already does. I mean, you know, you leave your smartphone at home and you can't live. Suddenly you have, you know, no one to talk to. If people call you, you have no way of getting to them. Uh, if you need to check something, you don't know how to because you're the only one on the, on the subway without a smartphone in your hand. You feel like an outcast, like a moron. So technology will obviously dominate the world as populations, resource exploitation, and potential social conflict grows. Therefore, the, uh, the success of this convergent technologies priority area is essential to the future of humanity. And so this whole idea of transhumanism, which basically fills people's hopes and minds with dreams of becoming superhuman. Exactly. But, yeah. but the fact of the matter is that the true goal is the removal of that pesky human free will itself. 
and post-humanity will be a new human, which has been genetically engineered and brain chipped for total control, be it part man, part machine, part whatever, this new individual will no longer have the need of the sexual reproductive function. And if the elite's plan is to reduce the world's population, I can't think of a better way to do that. 